What is going on guys? Welcome to this Python tutorial series for machine learning. In today's video we're going to talk about the k-neighbors classifier, k-nearest neighbors classification, which allows us to classify unknown data by looking at data that is already classified. So let us get into the explanation. So as always let us start out with a quick explanation in paint and for this I'm going to once again draw a coordinate system. On the x-axis we're going to have the height or the heights of persons and here we're going to have the weight or the weights of these persons and now what we could do is we could say okay the red people are the overweight people they have a lot of weight even though they're not very tall so they have a low height but a very high weight so we would classify them as overweight so because you know you could have a lot of weight but also be very tall which would be normal and you would be somewhere around here which is not necessarily overweight because you know if you're two meters tall um, having a having like 100 kilograms is not that bad but if you're 150 and you have 100 kilograms probably you're overweight uh, and we're going to do the same thing with a blue class uh, these are the very tall people that are not uh, that have a very low weight so we, we could say these are the underweight people or the very skinny people uh, and this is the blue class now of course, in this example, we don't have any quote unquote normal people. So we don't have average people. We only have the extremes. But I use this example here to uh, show you how the K neighbors classification works. So what we want to do is we, ha we have this classified, uh, these classified data points because this is a supervised learning algorithm. We already to uh, tell the model that we have the red points and the blue points. Uh, and what we now do is we get a new example, a gray one, an unclassified one which is somewhere like here. And we want our model to now say, is this point a blue point or a red point? Is this person overweight or underweight uh, or skinny, basically? Uh, and this is what K neighbors does for us. It looks at the neighbors to determine if this point is a red point or a blue point. Now, we as humans would immediately classify this point to be red rather than blue. We would probably say it's not even red, but it's definitely not blue. It's more red than blue. Uh, and the algorithm does the same things because what it does is it says uh, k is a certain number. For example, k could be 1, k could be 2, k could be 6, whatever. Uh, and what it does is it takes k amount of neighbors to compare uh, the unknown point to. So it says, okay, the nearest neighbor is this one. And if k is 1, it only looks at this one point and says, okay, this point is red, so you're red. Then if k is 2, it looks at the second nearest point and the third nearest point and so on. And in the end, of course, these are now all red. But if you, let's say, if we would have some green class over here, uh, what would happen if we have k equals 2? Uh, or actually, 2 is not a good number here. Would, uh, let's say we have uh, k equals 4. What we could do is we could have, this is the nearest, second nearest. Sorry, my drawings are quite shitty today again. Um, then this might be the third nearest, and even though it's not true, let's assume that's the third nearest, uh, the fourth nearest point. Uh, we would now say, okay, we have one green point, but three red points, so we classify this point as a red point. So we're looking at the nearest neighbors, and of course, what is important is that you should pick k should be a number that is not divisible. Uh, by the amount of classes. So if you have three classes, or actually the other way around, I think, uh, the amount of classes should not be divisible by k. Because if you have three classes, you, you should not pick three points. Because if I have, uh, or actually k, the value three for k, sorry. Uh, if you have a point right here, uh, which is actually not that good, but let's say you have it somewhat like here, and you have k equals three, you would have this one, this one, and this one at roughly the same uh, distance, and this is of course not what we want. So we want to have a classification that makes sense. So if you have three classes, you might want to pick four, or you might want to pick one. One is always good because one is uh, binary, but of course one is not accurate because um, what happens if I have, for example, a bunch of green points here, a lot of them and they're pretty near to the gray one but then I have a red point for some reason an outlier that is here 
And if I only look at one, uh, if I only say k equals one, look for one neighbor, what happens is uh, I take this one, even though obviously you would classify this as a green point because it's nearer to this point, uh, to this uh, class, sorry. So this is how k neighbors basically works the classification as uh, in the same way that I don't explain linear regression uh, or I didn't explain re linear regression in much detail. I'm not going to do this with k neighbors because I have a blog post on that. Uh, I'll link it down in the, in the description. So if you're interested in the k neighbors algorithm from scratch and Python, the mathematics behind it, check out the blog post and maybe I'll make some videos about that in the future. So this is the basic uh, way that k neighbors classification works. Now let us look at a practical example in Python of the k-neighbors classification. And we're not going to classify overweight people, we're going to look at a data set that comes from scikit-learn, and this is the breast cancer data set. This data set has a lot of parameters about cancer, about different tumors, and it classifies tumors as either malignant or benign, so either bad tumors or good tumors. Um, and we're going to do that with the k-neighbors classification. So what we're going to do is we're going to say from, sklearn.datasets import and we're going to import load breast cancer. This is the function to load the data set. Uh, and also we're going to import sklearn from sklearn.neighbors import k neighbors classifier. And maybe we're also going to need numpy. Who knows? Maybe not. And one more thing we need to import from sklearn.model selection import train test split so that we can uh, split our data into training and test data. Um, yeah, so what we're going to do first is we're going to get a look uh, on the data. So we're going to take a look on the data and see what it looks like. We're just going to say data equals uh, load breast cancer. And now we're going to say print data. So let's go ahead. It's a little bit laggy right now so that we can see what kind of columns and what kind of data we have in here. Okay, this is the data itself. I think if you wanna know the features, we've gotta say data.features and data.targets to know the targets. I think this is how it works. Feature, maybe feature and not features. No, it's also not true. What did I do in the example? Oh, sorry, feature names, feature names. Feature names and target names. Makes sense though. There you go. As you can see, these are the features that we have of a tumor. We have the texture, the radius, the area, the compactness, and all kinds of different uh, parameters that we can use to classify a tumor as either malignant or benign. And then we have the two classes, the two targets, malignant or benign. So bad, good, basically. Um, or harmful and not harmful. So uh, this is the data set that we have. And what we're going to do now is we're going to split this data set up into training data and testing data. So we're going to say x train, x test. I think it was like that. Uh, then y train and y test equals train test split data. And we want to have a test size of, um, actually, we, we do need data dot, dot features, I think. Or, no, actually, we need data dot data. So we need to pass a numpy array of data dot data because this is actually the data is actually the feature data and the target is the target so we gotta pass np array data data and np dot array data dot target there you go and the test size is 0 0.2 so basically what we're doing is we're saying Take the data, which is uh, the feature data, so take all these parameters, all these rows of these values, uh, put them into a NumPy array, then also take all the results, all the classes, all the classifications, all the targets, and put them in another NumPy array, 
and then split 20% of that or put 20% of that into test uh, data and 80% of that into training data. So we split the data. Uh, also, we shuffle a little bit in there because uh, the split is not always the same. It does not take the first 80 and the last 20. It shuffles around before it splits. So uh, it's also a little bit randomized, which is good. And then we have this data here. We have the training data and the test data. And the next step, of course, is to define a classifier. So we're going to say CLF for classifier or call it whatever you want equals K neighbors classifier. And now we can specify a uh, I think it was n neighbors, n neighbors, and we can specify how many neighbors we want to look at. And I'm going to pick three because three is a good number. We have two classes, so three is fine because we cannot have a tie there. We got to have one that's uh, one class that has one more neighbor. Um, so we have the classifier, and what we do now is we say CLF dot train on the X train, Y train data. So we use the training data for the features and the training data for the target, and then we uh, train the model on that. Or actually, I'm, I'm quite stupid. Why did I say train fit? Sorry. Uh, CLF.fit, and then we use the training data. Uh, after we have done that, what we're going to do is we're going to evaluate the model. So we're going to say print CLF.score, uh, which is the model for testing how well a uh, model performs. We're going to say clf.score and we're going to use the tests data to check if the training was good or enough, if the model performs well. Because the test data is, of course, data that the model has never seen before. And as you can see down here, we got a, uh, a 93.85 or 86, actually, if you round it up, uh, accuracy, which is really good because it means that if we Give, if, if we have a new tumor that we don't know if it is malignant or benign, we get all these parameters and feed it into a model. It will tell us with a 93.8% accuracy if this tumor is malignant or benign, which is pretty good, actually, because otherwise you would have to guess, and guessing is always 50-50 if you have two classes, so 93% is actually very good. Um, now, of course, what you could do is you could just go ahead and say clf.predict, and pass a list or a NumPy array actually with all these parameters and then classify them as either malignant or benign, which you would do if you would have a or an application in the medical uh, area. But for this tutorial, it doesn't make sense to just make up some values. So if you wanted to predict um, tumor data, you would have to get new tumor data, put it in into a NumPy array, pass it to the predict method, and then you would get either malignant or benign as a result. And this is how it works. So this is how you use uh, K neighbors classification in Python. So that's it for today's video. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you learned something. I hope you enjoyed this video. If so, hit the like button and support this channel with a like. Uh, also, feel free to ask questions and give feedback in the comment section down below. And of course, subscribe to this channel if you want to see more free videos in the future. So thank you very much for watching. See you in the next video and bye.